Hello, everyone. Like I mentioned, there was only one uh, point that was remaining in my last video where we have uh, used the MBS pattern to, to control the data uh, flow uh, from one source database to, to, to another. And keep in mind, it's just like a, a pattern that you can obviously enhance, like you can change the, the source uh, from database to the file system or, you know, network share or, you know, even API or, or maybe a data lake, you can use it. It really depends. And I will try to cover uh, uh, these uh, uh, sources so it can help you to see uh, how, how things work. We obviously start with small and then we expand the uh, the uh, the capacity or the capabilities of solution and that that's the way we normally do our work we make sure that whatever we are developing or building that is more mature and that is addressing the requirement till we reach to the point where it is addressing all the all the requirements given given by by the business right so in the last uh, solution what we have done uh, we have seen uh, a pattern uh, where we have uh, run the the ETL job uh, based on the value that business has given to us. And the scenario was, if you don't remember, I'm going to actually put the link of the part one into 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 the description of this video. We load the data from our source database, which is the local database on, on our local server. And we load the data into the cloud Azure SQL environment, which is obviously a, a great thing to, to see in action, especially if you are new to the, uh, the cloud SQL, you can see how, how similar or how seamless it is to work within the, within the, within the, local environment and within the cloud environment, especially from the dev perspective. I have executed a couple of queries and I've shown you that I am uh, able to connect to, to our uh, Azure SQL database through through uh, through uh, uh, SQL Server Management Studio, which is a very common tool that most of the the, the, the dev or uh, engineers use, use while they are working with the with the SQL uh, server-based data sets, right? So there was only one step that was still manual where I have to run the, the ETL package, and then uh, it will load the data based on whatever uh, right, uh, uh, sorry, percent type uh, the business has selected to, to load in. So in this video, what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually take out that glitch and we're gonna make it uh, fully automated. And we're gonna see end-to-end -end solution, how the business is changing the value and how the data is landing into, into our cloud-based uh, uh, database. So let's go straight into the lab. So we are in the in the lab environment. Let me quickly show to you. We don't have any any data at the moment in this table. I have cleaned all the table, but now what I'm going to do, I have built the the job, which is at the moment disabled. Uh, let me first show you what value we are going to. Uh, so uh, if you can see, there is no value at the moment that is going to be uh, loaded from the percentile perspective. What I'm going to do as a first step, I'm going to activate percent type EM type, and I'm going to now activate my job as well. You can see I have disabled it. How that job has been created, How what is the SQL agent, how we uh, deploy our ATL package within the SQL agent environment. That's a completely different discussion. That's why I don't want, I don't want to include it into, into this, this uh, video series. I want to keep it uh, close to, or keep it focused on, on the master data services and MBL. And one of the major points which I'm trying to actually uh, share with you guys that how you can bring the data governance in in the picture where even you don't have you know a lot of buy-in from the business if business has other priorities they want to pursue but you still want to make sure the responsibility is shared between it and the business so these are the pattern you can use you can give them the ownership that okay you guys need to execute this job instead of you know sending a request into service desk and asking us to execute the job so you can you're going to see how how the business can literally run independently with, with least intervention from, from the IT. So I have, I'm going to, let's say, I'm going to enable it. So assume that we have an automated job which is running in the SQL environment. I have activated this uh, type, which is EM. And now all I need to wait till my uh, job run. So that, that's all I need to do. I just need to 
uh, change the percent type, which one is going to be uh, active. There is a backend job which is running, uh, which I have actually shown you in, in here within my SQL Server environment. That's gonna take care for all, all the all the rest for, for my behalf. Now imagine how cool it is that, okay, we know we have, and it's a normal call in, in the business. We have a lot of job that needs to run once a month and even once a week and, uh, you know, uh, once or twice uh, a, a week. So theoretically, what I've seen that, you know, sometimes business have to send an email and then uh, IT need to configure or run this job. It just create an additional burden on, 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 on the on the data team. But with this automation, and it's not a fully, I would say a complete automation, it is automation with the business involvement, like they can control the automation through, through the MDS. That's the pattern we are discussing. They activate the employee uh, person type. I don't know why I keep saying employee type. Uh, they activate the person type, and then the rest of the the mechanics or solution. It makes sure that the the, the type has been loaded into into the into the uh, Azure. So let's come back and see. Do we have the records? Yes, we have two seventy three records. Voila, we have seen that in the previous one. Let me just. We activate it. I just put two minutes interval. So that's why I'm just uh, making sure it's not going to duplicate the record. Uh, if we have that challenge, uh, like uh, uh, if we want to make sure one data set is not going to be loaded multiple times, there are other uh, conditions that we can add it, but that, that's obviously that we are talking about, you know, uh, additional requirement and once we show the solution to the business and they are agree, then we define all these edges. But in, in its simplest format, you have seen that uh, the, the 273 record has been loaded in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the cloud database with only one action, which we have taken on, on our MDS table. Right now, just to show you another and then uh, another uh, uh, round, and then we'll close the video. Let me run the SC as well, and we'll see. So being a business, I have actually, and now I just need to wait because I know there's a job which is running and I've activated SC per, uh, percent type. And now I'm assuming that that data is going to be loaded into, into, the, into the cloud as well. So that that means that we just need to wait for, for the next run. Yeah, we just need to wait for the next run uh, because once we change it, the, the job has already been executed. And although I don't want to give you much about uh, much information about SQL Server Agent, but SQL Server Agent is responsible to run all kind of uh, jobs that we want to schedule or that we want to run uh, on, on, uh, on automation basis. Right, so that, that's where we use the, the agent services and it has full capabilities to run any kind of script or even the PowerShell script, uh, as well as the as well as the, the integration services. And even I think uh, we can execute uh, analysis services scripts as well, uh, which I haven't actually used SQL Server to do it, uh, but at, at least these three, the PowerShell and the, uh, the SQL Server scripts, as well as the SSI aspect it is. Uh, it's a very common uh, uh, exercise that we do day to day basis once we work into into the into the business organization. Uh, the good thing it will run automatically. There is no human intervention. Uh, it can collect some log, but we can obviously enhance that logging or auditing process by by adding more and more steps. You know that can control uh, or then uh, that can collect the information. And that will really help us, especially once there is a failure because one tip when you are designing the uh, uh, once you are designing your solution make sure think about if the job has failed what should be the step that the the job needs to take to you know uh, as a mitigation or you know as a as a as an auto recovery because that will really help you uh, in in designing your solution so we have reached to the to the time uh, uh, span and it, you can see it has been executed let me now run it. Voila, we have another uh, person type loaded into my cloud environment. I can come in and I can 
close this percentile. And just for last confirmation, let me run it. So you're gonna see, you're gonna have now similar output. We have 273% uh, type uh, uh, EM, and we have 753% with percent type SC. So hopefully that that makes the uh, that makes the full solution in an uh, in an automated way and make the sense to you. Uh, normally in the in the practical environment we build these kind of solutions which are fully automated. There is no human intervention and you know business can control or business can take the ownership of of executing the this solution based on their requirement. It's not like they are sending us email and we are you know executing a, a particular chunk of time. It's just you know. Uh, used to to configure or run these uh, uh, these jobs and then communicate back to the business so hopefully like other videos i believe that's going to be uh, beneficial for you as well uh, if you like the video please like or put your comments if you have any question more than happy to answer otherwise i'm gonna see you in the next video thanks for watching